Hello, good evening to you and welcome to News 360. The bulletin comes to you live from the News Hub here at Addis Kanda. I'm Natalie Fort. My name is Alfred Okansi. Coming up tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank and Piccadilly Biscuits. P and NDC sign communicate to disband vigilantism from Ghana's politics. If we see anybody doing any of these things and arrest is not possible, we will shoot to kill, not to maim. Head of security at the Ghana Grid Company warns saboteurs they could be gunned down after fuel pipelines belonging to Saros Oil Services in Tema were set on fire. Also ahead this evening, former Deputy Energy Minister and MP for Adantia Sokwa, KT Hammond, urges government to abrogate all oil block contracts signed from 2006 to 2016. And Ghana to consider venturing into manufacturing of lithium batteries. Details tonight. On the international front, UN Human Rights Commissioner warns attacks on civilians and civilian infrastructure in Libya could amount to war crimes. Stay with us here on News 360 for the details of these stories and much more news. As always, you could watch our bulletin live all across the world on 3news.com as well as on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Our very first story this evening, we will not hesitate to shoot, to kill, and not to maim. These were the words of the head of security at the Ghana Grid Company, Major Lawrence Appiah, retired as he sounded a stern warning to some persons who allegedly attempted burning some pipeline belonging to Cyrus Oil Services Limited in Tema. Our reporter, Selom Aminya, has come through with the following report. There were attempts by some persons on Sunday evening to set fire to pipelines belonging to Cyrus Oil Services in the Tema Power Enclave where Gridco and VRA also operate. Thus follows the cutting down of pylons belonging to Gridco around the same location some two weeks ago. Addressing the media after a tour along the affected pipelines, head of security at the Ghana Great Company Gridco, Major Lawrence Apia retired warned perpetrators who he described as saboteurs. Sometimes you cannot arrest because what the man is doing, where he can run to and all that. And I'm saying that we have soldiers in the enclave as you saw them at the gate patrolling. If we see anybody doing any of these things and arrest is not possible, we will shoot to kill, not to maim. He indicated that the recent attacks on the installations in the power enclave have resulted in a restructuring of their security strategy with support from other agencies. Of course, we are not going to sit down and allow it. So we have done all we need to do to have soldiers, police, the BNI, the National Security, all assisting us to ensure that we nip it in the bat. Unfortunately, three days ago, they attempted again, but our security guard, as you can see, the security post up there, saw them and gave the, our soldiers a head up. So they chased him and they ran away. He had already lit the fire, trying to burn the fuel lines on the ground to cause a possible explosion in the enclave. Manager in charge of health, safety, security and environment at Cyrus Oil, Daniel Ameho, noted the pipelines were exposed since it is an ongoing project. For now, I would say it doesn't pose any danger to the area. Because we haven't finished uh, what we are supposed to do on it, that is why it is open. You could see that the other parts were covered all the way down to the tall wall. He threw more light on the possible damage if there was fuel in the pipelines and the suspects had succeeded in blowing it. It will have uh, affected the whole Tema enclave over here. In the sense that we have all the pipelines interlinked to Tema oil refinery, to the harbor, to the jetty, mm. and then moving to APD, from APD to uh, Mamiota. Wow. So there's a network of pipelines over here. So if there were to be fuel in it and the person has succeeded, the whole fuel supply, the power enclave will have been in trouble. Two weeks ago, two of the 161,000 towers located in the Gridco enclave near the free zone area in Tema fell over other towers after both holding the pylon were cut and removed. Chief Technical Engineer in charge of lines at Gridco, Bernard Tekpo, gave the assurance work will be completed in two weeks. Partially, one is almost standing. 
and then one is completed and it's lying down there. So it's a matter of just lifting it. We could even have done that yesterday, but for the rains, we will not be able to bring the cranes here to, to, to do that because the crane might get stuck. Okay, so we intend to rather continue to assemble the second one, by which time the grounds will also be very solid for us to come and do the two at a go. Now, the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress, NDC, have signed a communique to show their commitment and, uh, to the process of disbanding vigilantism from their political parties. The two political parties, however, have varied views on how it should be done. Martin Esiedo Date was at the meeting organized by the National Peace Council to set out the modalities on how to eradicate or deal with political party vigilantism in the country. There has been a national outcry over the activities of party thugs and vigilantes which have dented Ghana's democracy following the Ayawaso West war gone by election violence which left some persons injured. Such groups affiliated to the two main political parties have caused chaos at by elections in the country, notably Etiwa, Chiriponi and Talensi. Although President Akufuado has ordered the Attorney General to send a bill to Parliament to legislate a law over vigilantism, he has also agreed that both parties should meet to address the menace. After several correspondence from both parties, the National Peace Council called for the meeting aimed at taking a decisive step on disbanding vigilantism. In a communique signed by chairmen of both parties and witnessed, by the board chair of the National Peace Council, Professor S.K.B. Asante, the NDC wants political vigilantism to be eradicated in all its ramifications, whereas the NPP wants the focus to be on political party vigilantism in all its ramifications. After an, an open and exhaustive deliberation, the parties agreed that vigilantism is inimical to Ghana's democratic system and must be eradicated. With respect to the immediate focus of the mediation or dialogue, the NDC is of the view that it should be the eradication of political vigilantism in all its ramifications, while the NPP is of the opinion that the focus should be political party vigilantism in all its ramifications. Significantly though, both parties agree to engage in deliberations aimed at one, disbanding vigilante groups operating within political parties or for political purposes. Two, prohibit the ownership, hiring or utilization of such groups by the political parties or members thereof. And three, cooperating with state agencies and stakeholders in the total eradication of such groups or incidents of vigilantism in the country. It should be noted that the two parties are also committed to exploring other processes. The next meeting has been set for April 29. Meanwhile, the National Democratic Congress says an invitation of its national chairman, Samuel Ufusu Ampofu, by the police CID forced them to abruptly leave the meeting with the new patriotic party over the disbandment of vigilante groups within their parties. Ufusu Ampofu's invitation is in connection with a leaked tape in which he is alleged to have called for attacks on the chairperson of the Electoral Commission and the chair of the National Peace Council. Samuel Ofusuampofu was giving a caution charge of conspiracy to commit crime and kidnapping intent and conspiracy to commit a crime with a threat of harm in his first appearance. A member of the NDC's legal team, Abraham Amalba, said although the meeting was conclusive, they could have had further discussions. Clearly, but for this uh, call by the police, invitation by the police, we would have dealt with much of the issues. Today, we've not been able to deal with much of the issues because he has been called to come to the CID headquarters. And this will definitely derail the process. But we are on our way to the CID headquarters. It has to do with the alleged leak tip, okay. which he has denied okay. constantly. For their part, the New Patriotic Party dismissed NDC's assertions, adding that it was a fruitful discussion. If any other institution want to do it, 
why should there be political parties inviting them to do it? I don't think that we should muddy the waters. If, most often, if people who don't want to agree with issues, they will bring a strenuous variables that will make it impossible for you to come to a conclusion. I believe that this was a call by the president on the two political parties to see to how best they can resolve this protracted problem between themselves. Member of the Peace Council, Professor Opoku Onyina, however confirmed both parties have shown substantive commitment to disbanding vigilante groups from their parties. Yeah, so far as the dialogue is concerned, personally, I don't see any opposing views. I think that they are all speaking the same thing from different perspectives. And that gives us very good assurance that they will listen to what the people are saying, or they have listened to what the people have said. Finally, that meeting to disband political party uh, militia started and the process, we're keeping a keen eye on it. But still staying with the NDC, the communications director of the party, that's the NDC, Samir Jafi, is saying the ruling NPP must admit its policies have failed in making the lives of the Ghanaian people better. He was addressing a news conference in Accra. At a news conference in Accra on Sunday, General Secretary of the Governing MPP, John Buedu, said President Mahama has nothing new to offer Ghanaians. But addressing the media on Tuesday, Communications Director of the NDC, Sami Jemfi, expressed confidence Ghanaians would vote for John Mahama in the next presidential elections. Ghanaians, come 2020, will choose this redenominated Mahama they are talking about who is actually a rejuvenated Mahama over a discredited, a depreciated, and a dilapidated present people. Let me indicate that it is quite obvious, even to the uninitiated, that Mr. John Boyd is calling for a tune he has no legs to dance to. It is clear as daylight that the impressive record of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama continues to haunt the MPP. He further challenged the MPP to provide proof that the former president was engaged in corrupt acts. President Ekufuadu and the MPP who promised to protect the public purse, mm. they who promised not to tolerate corruption, are today promoting corruption. Yes. Such that today the seat of government itself has become a monument of corruption. Today, the president himself has turned himself to a clearing agent, speaking for his errant appointees, defending them, and covering up many cases of corruption. Sami Jemfi also debunked claims that the NDC comes to power to destroy what MPP comes to build. <laughs> Let's turn to some other issues this evening as TV3 News has gathered that the CEO of Men's Gold, Nana Apia Mensa, popularly known as Nam One, has won his court case in Dubai. Now, the court on Tuesday, April 9, 2019, ordered Horizon Diamonds, the company which had issues with the embattled Men's Gold CEO, to pay him all outstanding debts. Nana Apia Mensa has been in the custody of Dubai authorities since November 2018 over a gold deal that went bad. He was charged with fraud after a case was brought against him by Horizon Royal Diamonds in a purported $51 million gold deal. He was granted bail in the sum of $3.5 million dollars and once this case is reportedly over, he is said to be pursuing the company that caused his arrest for about $31 million, which was why he had traveled to Dubai in the first place. It is unclear whether the Interpol alert placed on him by Ghanaian authorities, as confirmed by the CID boss last week, is still holding. CID boss COP Mamitiwa Ado Dankwa also indicated that Nanapia Mensa, Nam One, was released but was immediately rearrested after the Interpol arrest request. That's, that's the news coming through this evening uh, that TV3 News has gathered. We'll certainly be staying on this issue and bring you a lot more on it in our subsequent bulletins. Right. So the former Deputy Energy Minister under the Kofor administration, Governor Tare Hammond, is calling on government to abrogate all oil block contracts signed from 2006 to 2016. Now, the Adansia Sokwa MP has raised concerns on work on the 14 oil blocks, which he says have failed to go beyond the initial exploration stage. 
the Adansi Asoka MP, Kobina Tahiru Hamon, who himself was not in the house, tabled the question wanting explanations on the number of blocks awarded for exploration and how many have gone past initial exploration. Deputy Minister of Energy William Oreku Edo, in response, said the Idlo's ruling affected operations of some of the companies owning the blocks. One was relinquished, that is the offshore Accra contract area petroleum agreement initially operated by Tap Oil. While five were affected by the International Tribunal of the Law of the Seas um, ruling. The five petroleum agreements affected by the it loss ruling include one, expanded shallow water tunnel block, two, the offshore southwest tunnel block, three, central tunnel block, four, south deep water tunnel block, and um, finally number five, southwest Sorkum block. These companies have had their initial exploration periods extended to cater for the time loss as a result of the it loss ruling. Work programs are therefore ongoing for most of them in the initial exploration period because of the extensions. He, however, is of the firm belief that the companies were still within the contract period assuring grants of an assessment being done by the Petroleum Commission. None of the remaining 13 companies um, have fulfilled its minimum obligations within the initial exploration period and no discoveries have been made as yet. However, they have carried out their obligations to different degrees. Some have reprocessed, uh, reprocessed the existing data, acquired new 3D seismic data, and some are preparing to drill exploratory wells while others have only reprocessed or still reprocessing the assistant data, Mr. Speaker. The Ministry of Energy um, with Petroleum Commission are reviewing dormant petroleum agreements and depending on the outcome, a decision will be made whether or not to abrogate these PAs. Second May 2006, you will, you will he signed an agreement for gas up. Oranto, 2nd May, oh, May 2008. Yeah, this is the fact. Moments thereafter, unsatisfied Adansia Sokwa MP faced off with the former energy minister under the Muhammad administration, whom he blamed for the non performance. I'm not singling out anybody. I'm going for a whole block. I mean, uh, wholesale. If they haven't done the work, we should abrogate, give the blocks to sensible, reasonable companies which are prepared to do what it takes to discover oil for Ghana. Minister Sansa is saying that all of the companies are within their obligations and they, still, they are still within the contract period, which is the seven-year contract period. What it means is that within that period, the minister must be uh, asked to ensure that they are following their work obligation, they are meeting their requirements. A ranking member of the Roads and Transport Committee in Parliament, Kwame Agbuja, has accused the office of the vice president of deliberately concealing figures in the Sino-Hydro contract. The Adaklu MP is raising questions over value for money assessment, which he says is yet to be conducted. President Akufuado is scheduled to cut sod for the Tamale Interchange Project tomorrow, April 10, for official commencement of the $1.5 billion roads initiatives under the $2 billion agreement of Ghana and the Sino Hydro Master Project. The Master Project Support Agreement between the Government of Ghana and Sino Hydro of China was reached in 2017. It was later approved by Parliament and two sets of contracts were laid before Parliament. The two contracts were the Engineering Procurement Construction Contract EPC Deferred Payment Agreement DPA under the first tranche, a number of roads have been earmarked for construction. Before the president cuts the sword, a major concern has emerged from parliament. As we speak, we are not aware that value for money audit has been done. All we heard was that some individuals have been selected from Ghana Institute of Surveyors whose uh, locals we don't know. So it is not like an independent organization like Crown Agents to do value for money. 
The report is still not even known to anybody, yet they are going to cut off. I raised the significant issue of the fact that there's no legal opinion on the nature of the contract. Because if you brought an agreement to parliament, value for money is not condition precedent. Is the contractor bound to actually carry it out? No. The Roads and Transport Committee ranking member is blaming the vice president who was instrumental in brokering the deal. If you, if you have a situation where just to get a site, a, a, a contracted site at Afuans, Afuansi, $700,000. We're sorry. We apologize for that uh, loss in the video there. But you're still live here on News 360. We're live on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook, all across the world on 3news.com, on MTN Video Report. Today, our citizen journalist Rafael Dogbe reports on a high-tension cable which has been left unattended to in a gutter for almost two years. This cable is a high tension cable. This cable has been left unattended to for almost two years now. And I don't know what they are waiting to happen before they come and attend to this cable. Children play here. We've reported this case to the authorities, but to no avail. We are calling on the authorities to come and attend to this cable before there's disaster. I'm Rafael Dugby, Takradi, again, team. You can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055 Absolutely. Stay with us here on News 360. We've got business news coming up. Hello, good evening and welcome to the business news segment on News 360. My name is Pa Kwisiasari. In our very first story, Ghana is considering venturing into the manufacture of lithium batteries from the country's lithium deposits. Minister of Environment, Science and Technology as well as Innovation, Professor Kwabna Frimpon Boateng gave the hint on the sidelines of a conference by the Ghana Institute of Engineers in Accra. I think it's very important because that will help us in our year mobility program and also the solar um, technology, re renewable energy, solar energy, and so on. We, we know that lithium is used to manufacture batteries for electric vehicles. And that is the most, impo the most uh, sp expensive component of that industry. In the next 20 to 25 years, most vehicle manufacturers will be producing electric cars instead of mechanical ones. The most common battery type in modern electric cars are lithium ion and lithium polymer battery because of their high energy density compared to their weight. Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabna Frimpon Boateng, says the country will take full advantage of the lithium deposits in the country. So if we're able to get the lithium here and we're able to produce the batteries locally, then electric vehicles, electric, such as uh, cars, motor bicycles, and other forms will be cheaper. It will also make solar energy cheaper in this country. So the government, especially the Minas Commission, is pioneering in that area, so we get investors who produce the batteries locally for us. Lithium, which is among the top 10 most expensive minerals in the world, was discovered in the Volta region by the Minerals Commission. It is used in aircraft manufacture as lithium hydroxide used to absorb carbon dioxide in space vehicles. It can also be used in the manufacture of certain batteries, heat-resistant glass and ceramics. The use of lithium carbonate is common in the treatment of bipolar disorder to stabilize the wild mood swings caused by the illness. The commodity is mixed with oils to make all-purpose and high-temperature lubricants. It is priced at more than $20,000 per ton on the Chinese spot market for battery-grade material, according to the Research House Commodities Research Unit, CRU. CRU expects lithium demand to triple between now and 2025. 
Away from that country, economist of World Bank, Kwabna Jan Kwache, has lauded government's efforts in tying itself from overspending. Reacting to Ghana's exit from the International Monetary Fund program, he taxed government to be prudent in its fiscal management to give essence to the exit. Ghana entered the IMF's extended credit facility program in 2015, but signed off this month. It is the 16th time the country has had to go to the IMF in its history. President Ekufu Ado has reaffirmed that the country will not return from any such support. Country economies of World Bank, Kwabena Jan Kwache, for his part, tasked government to continue with its fiscal discipline. We can look at the macro performance or the state of Ghana before the IMF and now, and we realize that over the past few years, um, the conditions have improved, inflation has gone down. So basically, all the targets that, all the expected Im improvements that uh, we want for Ghana are more or less uh, being achieved or has been achieved. He lauded government's attempt to ensure fiscal and debt sustainability following the passage of the fiscal responsibility law. You know that the IMF program usually would not allow government to more or less overspend because if you do so, you would have filled the, the, the program. So going forward, the government is at, is at liberty to spend. For example, we know the fiscal responsibility law that has been set is... It's a, it's a very good signal to let everybody know that the government wants to tie itself even going forward. Meanwhile, the IMF has encouraged Ghana to make provision for fiscal space to support priority programs and avoid off-budget expenditures. In other news, a lecturer at the Economics Department of the University of Ghana, Dr. Ebo Texan, has dismissed assertions that a review in Ghana's import duty regime will lead to an increase in imports. This follows a recent 50% reduction in benchmark values across board following agitations by importers over high import duties at the ports. The Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, announced a reduction in the benchmark values of imports by 50% and an additional reduction in vehicle tax by 30% at the maiden town hall meeting organized by government's economic management team. Trade expert and lecturer at the Economics Department of the University of Ghana, Dr. Ebo Texan, lauded government for the reduction but raised concerns about possible revenue shortfall. Currently, we have budgeted with uh, whatever it is, the, the trade revenue. So a reduction in the benchmark and also a reduction in the import duties will provide a, will be a challenge in, in terms of the, of the revenue side. So the question that we need to ask currently is that what have we put in place to make up for the shortfall in revenue? I mean, the World Bank, the IMF, I'm sorry, left Ghana not long ago. We shouldn't start pursuing policies that will look like we are trying to pursue populist policies that would throw our budget out of the est estimated, um, 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 what do you call it, out end. Many, including the Trade Union Congress, have also expressed fear this may lead to an increase in imports, but Dr. Texan says this may not necessarily be the case. I will not say that if you improve trade facilitation, then you are, you are making the economy more import dependent. We should expose our firms to fair competition because they can. They can compete. There are domestic firms here who can produce high quality products and become very competitive with a, even a, a, in a imported goods. What they need is the right environment to compete. So any policy that would either encourage goods coming in or going out is called for because in a multilateral trading system, you cannot make your ports uncompetitive. Otherwise, your domestic firms are not also competitive. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said the measures were designed to reduce smuggling and make the country's ports more competitive and attractive. The Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority in the Ashanti region exceeded its 2018 target by collecting 652 million cities revenue last year. The figure represents a 12.5% increase of its targeted 578 million cities. The target for the region this year is 800 million cities. Officers at the Tax and Good Governance Weeks are sensitizing the public on the need to file tax returns and also register for the tax identification number. 
the outreach program is to encourage voluntary tax compliance with a view to rope in more businesses. The GRA has developed an integrated application and cooperation system, an online platform for the filing of tax returns. GRA has developed an electronic payment platform through which operators in the informal sector, particularly commercial transport operators and small-scale self-employed persons on the tax stamp, who pay their quarterly taxes through mobile money in collaboration with one of the banks. This will be added up sooner than later. The Kumasi Metropolitan Chief Executive, Osei Esibe NG, said achieving government's agenda of Ghana Beyond Aid requires improved tax mobilization. To enable government meet the legitimate demand of populace, it is imperative for us to contribute and raise enough revenue domestically so that we will avoid stringent conditionalities attached to loans and grants from developing countries. Well, that's all for the very latest in business news. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Park Asari. For more business news stories, do log on to our website, 3news.com. Over to you, Alfred. Thank you, Park Chrissy, for business. You're still live here on News 360. Remember, we're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook on DSTV channel 279. We will be back after this break. Stay with us. All right, good evening. It's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Kwejradon. Starting off tonight, we are inching close to the VGMA as we want to find out who wins the VGMA Dancehall Artist of the Year. Gringo hitmaker Shata Wale, Top Most Kanka Stoneboy, and uh, Mobile Award winning act Samini are all eyeing the title. Now, also in contention is episode and the only female uh, contender, AK Songstress, Naftali Bar has been finding out who, uh, who the category best fits. You say wait, you come back with the thing, yeah. You are the most original. In recognition of the growing popularity of the dance hall genre, the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards Board created the category to honor the most outstanding dance hall act. Introduced in 2015, the category has carved an enviable attention for itself as the favorite of many music lovers. Stoneboy was the first artist to win the title. The Go Higher Headmaker beats competition from five other contenders including his musical godfather Samini to emerge tops. Four years down the line Stoneboy holds the record as the most decorated dancehall musician at the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Born Livingstone Eche Setakle, Stoneboy has won the Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year Award four times in a row but to feel better about themselves fans of Shatawale have argued that Stoneboy had a winning streak at a time Shatawale was blacklisted. The battle lines have been drawn as the 20th VGMA beckons Shatawale, Stoneboy, Samini, Episode and AK Songstress are all eyeing the title. Will Stoneboy make it five times in a row? Who rules the category at the 2019 Vodafone Gada Music Awards? It's a, it's a clear decision. It should go for Stoneboy because Stoneboy has been dropping hits all throughout the year. He's the man of the moment based on shows he's playing abroad and based on the people he's been able to associate with recognition he's gained so far. These are the things that we should look out for. I prefer Shatawalier man, because the guy is a good worker, hard worker. He has promoted dancehall in Ghana a lot. I'll give it to Shatawale. Yeah, I'll give it to him because I think he deserves it. Samini supposed to have because uh, that oba is very reggae like it's very nice as reggae and the dancer artist of the year supposed to be for the same samini of course the stone boy shatawale rivalry took a center stage 
Pow, pow, pow. I say be shut up. Forget. 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 Mas, what's in the door? Beam. All the way. No size. Well, well, if we sleep, sir, they go carry give us. If we sleep, sir, they go carry give us. If we sleep, yeah, that come with the bamaye. Or with the back, sir, they go call us. Say, make we wanna, wanna this thing they come. Ah, say man, I can't run again. If you go even calm down, if you shut up, if you stop by himself, say see shut up, they panic. Oh, Fingers crossed. May the best contender win. All right, so is it going to be SM Beam or, of course, our high grade family? We're looking forward to that 9th on the 18th of May for the VGMA uh, event. Now, moving on to another story. The tenor of office of Vice Ose Kufour, president of the Musicians Union of Ghana, Musica, will come to an end in June 2019. The question of who fills his shoes has been on the lips of many. Acclaimed musician and the current first vice president of Musica, Bessa Simons, has hinted of plans to contest for the Musica presidential position. The Belimbe hitmaker is expected to officially communicate his decision to take over from Obo in the coming days. Musica will on June 26 this year hold elections to elect new executives. Aside Bessa Simons, names like Jedublay Ambule, Apietus and Lynx Entertainment boss Richie Mensa have come up as likely personalities to contest for the seat. So also we are looking forward to who becomes the next musical president. My name is Nana Quadrado. Thank you so much. And that's about it for Entertainment and Lifestyle News tonight. I want to say a very big happy birthday to Alfred Okansi. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank I was you just so asking much. him if you should say it or not. He was right. Like, yeah, right. yeah. But <laughs> Wally fascinates me. Where did he get the yeah. pa 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 yeah. And they all keep, they're very passionate they're supposed to the Chateau and Stone Boy battle. I see, because mm. now we have Bim, we have pa pa, we have ha. Huh? <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. You know, it's a signature. Yeah. It's a signature. Very works. important. It's important for it them. It is actually. I think it's key. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so, my brother, thank you. Thank you, yeah, sir. So, on behalf of the rest of the team, we're grateful that you spent your 60 minutes with us here on News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. I'm Natalie Fords. Do visit our website, 3news.com, for a lot more news. Have a pleasant evening.